Big Daddy here, and today we're going to take a look at Linux Mint 18.1 KDE. So let's get started. So Linux Mint 18.1 came out around January 27th. And I'm just now getting around to reviewing it, so I'm a little behind. So the big update with Linux Mint 18.1 is the fact that it's running 5.8 Plasma version now. And it is one of the most stable Plasma versions to date. There were other stable versions, 5.6 and 5.7, different versions of those. But they also had different annoyances with certain things crashing and certain uh, dual monitor issues. And with 5.8, the earlier versions of it, they started fixing those one by one. And by the time 5.8.5 came out, it was rock solid. So that's the big update, Plasma 5.8. They also did put in a few minor updates, like with the update manager, they added different columns, uh, different views in the kernels. Uh, they added more support for different mirrors and some artwork. But the major update is the fact that it's on 5.8. So let's see what's under the hood. So the version is 5.8.5. The KDE Frameworks is 5.28. The Qt version is 5.6.1. The kernel version is 4.4.0-53. And I think there is an updated kernel in here. Yeah, 6.2 is in here. But I'm just leaving it on that one for now. And it is running on an i7-2600 with 16 gigabytes of RAM. So speaking of RAM, let's, uh, let's go check the RAM out here. All right, so... 2.3 gigabytes of memory. Now, when I started this video, it was at 2.1, so it's been steadily climbing. When I cold did a cold boot, it was started out at between 7 and 800 megabytes. And I know that you can get plasma versions down to between 4 and 500, but 7 700 megabytes for a plasma version is not not bad. And with that said, I always run around between 1.5 and 2 gigabytes of memory on any plasma version that I run whether it's arch or whatever it may be I run between 1.5 and 2 gigabytes of ram so whether that's specific to my hardware or system I don't know but that's what I normally run so this is not surprising to me and it doesn't matter to me if I got 16 gigabytes of ram and I'm using two of them so that's not a big deal now, when you boot up onto any Linux Mint operating system, you will be greeted with the welcome screen. And the new features section takes you to the website we just read. And then you have a documentation section. You have an apps uh, section where you will open up the Linux Mint software manager. And it does take a second or two to open up. But once it's open, it is very stable and will be able to install any program without a problem. I don't remember ever having this crash on me or coming up with an error, installing anything. Definitely one of the most stable parts about Linux Mint. Comes with category views, and then when you go into the view, you have uh, your listing, and you'll see a green check mark for all the things that are installed. And you have popularity ratings, which I don't know if I'd put that much credence into that, but at least they're there to give you an idea. And it also comes with screenshots of the program itself so you can make a decision of if this is something you would like to use or not and if it's not already installed it'll say install here you click there and you install it definitely a good software manager now with that said my preference is not to use it because plasma itself is a sleek modern looking desktop and this software manager is not exactly the most sleek modern looking one so my preference is not to use it. But that's not a usability or stability issue. That's just a preference. All right, so you have a driver manager as well to install any drivers you need for your hardware. So I have an NVIDIA GTX 960 on here. 
and it installed the latest, uh, not the latest, the recommended driver. I could add a PPA and get the latest. I think the latest is 3.378, but I just went with the recommended. It had already installed my wireless drivers, so although they were here, I didn't need to install that. So that's a nice feature. And you got forums, chat room, getting involved, and donations. So the normal traditional layout is what Linux Mint goes for. So you have a clock with your calendar. You have your system tray with your running programs in the background. And you have your task manager with the open programs that are running. You have your normal application launcher that is default on most Plasma versions. But it also comes with alternatives where you can do the application menu, which is a sleeker, leaner menu, and the application dashboard, which is a full screen menu. I'm not going to put them on because usually they're screen tearing with the full screen menu. So uh, we'll skip that. Now, you have your favorites. And as far as software that's installed, you have GIMP, ScanLight, GwenView, and Digicam by default. Internet, you have KTorrent, Conversation, Kmail, which is interesting because most Linux Mint distributions come with Thunderbird, I believe. And you have Firefox. I mean, I know Kmail is a KDE app, but... Uh, audio and multimedia, you have Amarok, K3B, VLC, and Dragon Player. The other ones uh, I installed to test out. Under Office, you have the full suite of LibreOffice. Under Settings and System, you have specific applications that are for Mint itself, like the Upload Manager, um, the Parental Controls, the Backup Manager. Uh, they install the GUFW firewall configuration so you can configure your firewall. They install Synaptic, which is not usually installed on a Plasma edition. So definitely things that are specific to Linux Mint. So if you're running Linux Mint 17 or one of the older Plasma versions like 5.6, 5.7, I would definitely recommend the upgrade because you're not going to compromise stability and you're going to gain the new features of 5.8, which is, which without, when you don't have to compromise to upgrade, it's definitely worth the upgrade. So Linux Mint offers customization that it has a bar set. And there are good things about this. There are good things about Linux Mint 18.1. But I'm going to say that I was a little disappointed that I don't think this met the normal bar of expectations for Linux Mint distribution. Maybe these are due to it being a KDE version. And maybe some things weren't able to be put in. But it seems to me that it doesn't meet the normal standard for a, the Linux Mint bar. And I'll just show you a couple examples of why. Uh, when you go into the file manager, most all Linux, Linux Mint distributions have the open as root, root actions, and they are not in here. Although they do work, they are installable, they're just not here. And Linux Mint normally has those, which is surprising. Um, in the theming section, you know when you're on a Linux Mint operating system because it comes with Linux Mint themes and Linux Mint icons, which are not present in this KDE version. Now I realize there's a you know a big difference between the GTK themes and the themes that run under KDE, but that's why I said I think it's not up to the normal par of Linux Mint customization, where you know you're running Linux Mint because of the icon sets, because of the themes, because of the detailed software that they install. So you do have some of the detailed software, but you don't quite have all of the customization that you have with a normal Linux Mint distro, like the login manager. It runs the Plasma login manager, and it has the normal generic default Plasma um, background and whatnot. So there's no there's not that same level of customization as you normally find with Linux Mint. So let me just, while we're on that subject, um, here is one of the problems that I run into. So when you click on shutdown, you'll get the normal screen here, and it'll be centered in the middle of the screen. You'll have suspend, reboot, shutdown, and logout. 
But when you go to leave and you click switch user, the cancel or switch user is not centered in the middle of the screen. And that's because I have dual monitors, but there's an issue there. And whether that's plasma or whether that's, obviously it's gotta be plasma that's doing that, but usually Linux Mint finds a way to reduce those issues. And that one, I guess, I don't know if it got by or, or whatever, but that's something that needs to be addressed. The other thing is they offer the instant messaging integration. And when you come in here, you'll see you can configure different messaging accounts for this uh, application. And you can hit create, and I'm going to click on Google, and it comes up with the web authentication for Google. Now, this has been a 50-50 try for me. I've done this multiple times, and half the time it comes up with this window to integrate it, and half the time it comes up with an error saying that it can't find that protocol. So I'm not sure what's going on with that. I'm not going to be using most of these. I think there's three people that use AIM yet and four people that use Yahoo Messenger. But I was interested in the Telegram part of it. And when you hit Telegram, you come up with this message that says it needs a program called Morse. And please try to installing Morse with your package manager. So when you go to Synaptic Package Manager, there's Morse in there, but everything that comes up has to do with Morse code training. Okay, nothing to do with the a protocol for Telegram. And I guess what I'm saying is Linux Mint is known for its customization, known for being good for new users. And if a new user comes in here and has problems with the Google area and with the Telegram area, which is probably the two most top chat programs, instant messaging type things you would use it nowadays, uh, they're going to have issues. And that's something that I think needs to be addressed as well. Overall, I think it's a stable distro. I think it's a stable operating system. Now, does it have the same level of customization as the normal Linux Mint does? No, it doesn't. But is it worth the upgrade for you if you're running Linux Mint, a Plasma version already? I believe it's worth the upgrade. I believe with the new features of 5.8 and with the stability that's there, I definitely think it's worth the upgrade. Is it right for you? You'll have to decide that. But until next time, Big Daddy out.